The secret behind Hemlock's mystery experiment has been revealed, but what does this mean for the future of the cloning program? Welcome to Star Wars Uplink. So, we got episodes 10 and 11 of Bad Batch Season 3, and they dove deeper into more of the specifics around Hemlock's plan. We had some fan favorite characters like, you know, Tarkin, mm -hmm. as well as Cad Bane in the episode. Yep. So, we got some good callbacks there to yep. previous stuff. And more importantly, we got to see behind the doors of Hemlock's secret room. Into the vault. <laughs> Project Necromancer, which I honestly was a little bit surprised. I know. What I, was behind the door? I was, yeah, same. I was a little underwhelmed, I yeah. guess. I was, it's like, oh, this is just a normal thing. There's no monster behind door number three. Yeah, yeah. Definitely was not expecting some bright, sterile room. Mm -hmm. With just a bunch of kids. kids. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Like, I can only imagine what it felt like when the Emperor walked into that room. Like... Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hello, Ooh, children. A little uncomfortable there. Yeah. But okay. I mean... A there, lot less ominous than... Yeah, than what I... was kind of expecting. I expected them, especially with all those blast doors mm -hmm. and uh, the red... I yeah. don't know what you call it. looks those. very evil. It looks very menacing. But makes sense considering this is a experimentation facility and mm -hmm. when you look a little bit deeper yeah it kind of makes sense that they would go this direction rather than i don't know like some monster or something right yeah so yeah i, I do really appreciate when star wars gives itself the time to actually tell a story like i felt like the pacing was a bit slower mm -hmm. but i enjoyed it more mm -hmm. like instead of like previous episodes where they just are slow for slowness sake it feels right this one felt like it needed to build that tension. It mm -hmm. needed the pressure that the extra length of time for this like single story kind of needed. Yeah, and once again, we got the double feature sort of yeah. thing. We got the two episodes back to back, which I think makes sense for this one, just mm -hmm. because we would have gotten two. I mean, the second episode... It was definitely much more what we come to expect from Bad Batch. Yeah. Um, but that first one was definitely just digging deeper, diving into mm -hmm. what's really going on, just giving us some more clarity, and yeah, building up that tension. And uh, I wouldn't want to say that they're gonna they're starting to point out the flaws or like point out where the Bad Batch might get some help in yeah. the future. But yeah, they they're definitely building it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they've only got about, I, I think, five episodes to go before mm. the, the finale. Wow. And I think if we look at our discussion from last week, talking about how much stuff they have to get through for this to like really be finished off, I don't necessarily think we're going to get the answers to all of our questions. Definitely not. Uh, we don't have enough time, I feel, for them to really dig deep into the, the big questions that we have with the Bad Batch so far. Of like, what's Palpatine doing? What's mm -hmm. Hemlock doing? This is ultimately going to be a story based around Omega, like we kind of expected it to be. Going from from seasons one, two, and now three, we've got that almost full circle arc for the, her character of making the sacrifice. But also at that same note, we're going back to kind of where we started because mm -hmm. Omega started the season in the Tantus. prison, yeah. in the Tantus facility. Yeah. Now we're going back there. What does it look like now that we've had some healing in the Bad Batch group? What does it right. look like now that they've kind of, they're on the back foot now mm -hmm. because, I mean, Wrecker is passed out. Yep. Crosshair has failed again. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, I think they're going to be demanding a lot more answers out of Crosshair. And I yeah. think Crosshair will have to break a bit in his stoicism mm -hmm. in a way. He's going to have to admit what really did happen to him behind the cell bars of Tantus yeah. because they're not really going to be able to get anywhere where they're at right now. Mm -hmm. Like They're back to square one where yeah. we began. So it really, this is just a fascinating choice. Like once again, the team is failing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they failed once again. And I think it's, I think, I think it's telling that we keep on getting to this point that mm -hmm. the bad badge quite haven't healed from their, their past traumas. And, and when you look at this, and then if you look at the, the other side of things with Hemlock and the rest of the empire, we're getting a very dark 
look at what the Empire is actually doing. Mm -hmm. Not quite as dark as they they could have gone. Sure. But the implications are there for the severity of the actions and how far the Empire is willing to go for this. Mm -hmm. Building some kind of super soldier, it almost looks like they're trying to do... I don't think this is the case, but it looks very much like Death Troopers or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Like, how can we piece technology and cloning together? Right. What does that look like? It definitely feels feels like the first iteration or something yes. like this is like the extremely early stages mm-hmm. of and that might what that be become. what the trooper is mm-hmm. it's like version 0.5 right <laughs> and they're working to get that 1.0 mm-hmm. in a way i'm surprised of how they revealed these troopers like they mm-hmm. kept just showing schematics yeah it's like are you not gonna like actually reveal this we're just gonna have to like see these sketches of Mm -hmm. this prototype of a person and yeah cyborg something yeah okay (laughs) if you look at like the death troopers in legends they are cyborgs but they're about 70 percent human Mm -hmm. and then as the versions continue to be developed they lose that humanity. Yeah. By the end, they aren't even cyborgs anymore. They're they're mostly robots, but they have a little bit more of the freedom. And I think it makes sense for them to utilize the clones in this because oh, yeah. in, in Legends, it it wasn't clones. It was just people. Right. Just anyone they could yeah. brainwash and turn mm-hmm. into their own devices. I actually think it makes sense for them to be using clones. Oh, yes. Especially at this early stage. A, they're expendable. No one's going to miss them. Mm-hmm. And they're already kind of pre-programmed. A, as soldiers soldiers and be as clones like yeah. they're they have the experience with developing mm-hmm. in this way yeah. i also think it's an interesting combination of palpatine's plan a and plan b if you look at the prequel trilogy and, and the war that they're fighting in that you have the separatists the robots versus the republic and the clones mm-hmm. so now this new amalgamation yes. is combining both of these plans for the future of that palpatine wants to have mm-hmm. Yeah, to that point, it just seems like this is just Palpatine showing his hand or like just really bringing his master plan together in this Mm -hmm. way of like... Well, he's exploring all of the options. Sure, yeah. I mean, he created kind of both sides and now he's like, well, let's put them together. Uh (laughs) Makes sense. Yeah, and if you look at it, like he's looking at various plans. If you go all the way back to like the Battlefront 2 campaign, you have this... Uh, plan probably D, maybe E or F, where you you have this contingency plan that once Palpatine dies, he has this like digital recreation of him that Mm. gets put out into place. That's like a hologram to put this plan into place. Mm. And that's just one of the many plans that he has. So this is maybe plan D. And then they have like E, F. G H uh, order sixty seven sure. yeah. eight nine what <laughs> like those are all of the different things that that Palpatine's working toward and I, I think this is just one of the many strategies that he's experimenting with oh for sure you know this guy's got plans upon plans upon yes. plans upon plans uh-huh. plans within plans yeah I mean ultimately all of this benefits his gain mm-hmm. just the I'm, I'm really curious about the M count though yeah and how that really all fits in yeah, I assume they didn't do a great job of explaining why in no, particular they're exploring this no. path I'm assuming it's to give I mean ultimately it's to make Palpatine's yes ultimate super but clone. in terms of what but, Hemlock is concerned yeah. with is this just like to give them better reflexes? reflexes? Yeah. Is this just to give them an edge? Mm-hmm. Is it so that they can feel out the force users? Is this yeah. something like I, that's not clear? Mm-hmm. And I I assume they're gonna tell us because I, I think highly o- doubt it. <laughs> Omega will probably fish something out, but I they may keep this mm-hmm. totally closed up. Like. Yeah. That we may never know. <laughs> uh-huh. It definitely seems like they're setting up something to go forward. I mean, we'll see what ends up happening as we go on with the last five episodes, but we'll, we'll see. Mm-hmm. Well, for as big a stink as they're making this M count thing, uh-huh. come on, if you don't yeah. tell us what the heck you're doing with this, that's going to be, I'm going to be a little upset. Yes, but <laughs> hopefully we get something else too. Yeah. Let us know your thoughts on this theory and what did you think of the revelations in the most recent Bad Batch episodes. Let us know in the comments and hey, check out our podcast. As always, may the force be with you.